I've started to reduce the amount of AI that I use in my day-to-day -day coding workflow. And what got me to even begin thinking and reflecting about my AI usage in my coding workflow is this one research paper that came out that measured just how much more productive are developers that use these AI coding tools. I thought it was a particularly interesting paper that made me reflect on my coding habits with AI. So maybe there's something useful in here that'll make you begin to reflect on your AI usage in your day-to-day -day coding workflow. So in this video, I'm gonna do a quick summary on what that research paper said and what my reflections and thoughts are on the paper and how I've adjusted my day-to-day -day AI coding workflow. But before we get into that part of the video, let's take a quick break and hear a message from this video sponsor. And while I'm actually starting to use less AI on a day-to-day -day basis while coding, one part of my dev process that I am increasing the usage of AI is in the bug reporting and the bug triaging process. If you're a developer watching this, you're probably pretty familiar with the following scenario of, oh, someone reports a bug on a piece of software that you built, and then you ask them, okay, um, what are the reproduction steps on creating this bug again? And they say, um, I don't know, let me check. And then it takes a long time to figure out how to actually reproduce the bug. And sometimes it's only a bug that that one user sees that you're not always gonna be able to consistently reproduce. And then the cycle repeats itself for hours. And I bet some of you are actively in one of those debugging sessions right now, and you're actually trying to procrastinate by watching this YouTube video instead. Yeah, sorry, didn't mean to at you like that. But now there's a tool called jam.dev that automatically captures all of the bug reproduction details, including network requests, console logs, OS details, so that when someone catches a bug, you get all the details required to reproduce the bug without having to go through that annoying back and forth of figuring out how exactly to reproduce that bug in the first place. It's dead simple to use. All you need to do is whenever you run into a specific bug, you just click on the Jam Chrome extension and it'll capture an entire instant replay of everything that went on to trigger that bug. And the AI automatically takes in all the info and writes a really detailed bug report so that you can immediately figure out what is broken and you can reproduce the error yourself. Or you can paste the Jam in your coding agent so it sees exactly what you see without prompting for hours. Just connect it using Jam's MCP. Stop wasting time collecting repro details and start using Jam to speed up your bug triaging and bug reporting process. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there was a research paper that came out that tried to measure how much more productive are developers when they use these AI coding tools. I'll include a link to the actual research paper in the description of this video because I'm probably going to butcher a lot of details, but spare me, don't roast me too much in the comments because the whole point of this video is not really to dive into the details of how scientifically rigorous this actual study was, but it's more so just something to get you thinking about your day-to-day -day AI coding usage, okay? The experiment set up of this research paper was pretty simple. They essentially got a group of open source developers, so people that actively contribute to open source projects, so pretty experienced developers is what they're trying to get at, and they essentially separated this group of people into two separate buckets. Some people that can fix a bug using the AI coding tools, and then another group of people that can fix the bug without using any AI coding tools. And in the end, the vast majority of the people that did not use the AI coding tools solved the bug in the less amount of time compared to those that actually ended up using the AI coding tools. Although the general sentiment was that the people that did use the AI coding tools, they felt more productive and they felt like they solved it faster than their non-AI coding counterparts. I think there is a really big disconnect in terms of how good they feel and how productive they feel in terms of actually solving the bug versus the time that they actually spent to solve that bug. Essentially, everyone knows that feeling of when you're trying to debug something, fix a really thorny issue. It is a pain in the ass to be going out there, like trying to look through all the code, trying to find the source of that bug. And it's a much more pleasant feeling. It's less a less mentally stressful feeling just having an AI agent crawling the code and maybe crawling it more slowly than you, but still doing the work for you, finding the bugs, finding potential sources of bugs and potentially putting up a fix for you as well. And as this paper highlighted, there was a really big disconnect in terms of how productive someone felt versus how productive they actually were. And this got me thinking a lot more about my AI coding usage because I am so guilty of, you know, being like, I gotta lock in right now. I gotta do some deep work. And I just let my AI coding agent make some changes for me. And I'm kind of just out there twiddling my thumbs, watching a YouTube video, scrolling on X, scrolling on TikTok, waiting for the AI coding agent to finish their work. And then just going back, looking it over. I'm like, all right, cool. Now I repeat the process over and over and over again. In my peak AI coding usage, I literally did not write a single line of code ever. No matter how big or how small the change was, I always made the AI coding agent made that change for me. And looking back in hindsight, that actually probably reduced my coding velocity. That made me ship slower rather than shipping faster. Because let's be honest, with these AI coding models, they're really good at huge swaths of changes. But at least in my personal experience, I found they struggle a little bit more with tinier, fine-tuned changes. But for me, what I would end up doing in my peak AI coding usage is I would make it create a gigantic feature and it looked pretty good for the most part. But it's just that last like 10, 20% that it wasn't quite exactly how I wanted it. I would try to force the AI agent to make that change for me, even though it was significantly slower than me going in and manually making that change myself. And the whole reason why I did that was because, well, quite frankly, it's less taxing, it's less stressful for me knowing that I'm working, bro. I'm working so hard. Look, my AI coding agent is 
doing work for me. It's easier for me to say that than actually going in and manually making those code changes myself, even though it would take up less total time if I were to manually write that code myself. Now, I'm not saying this is like the end all be all of like speed of shipping is the most important thing in the world. I mean, low key it kind of is if you're trying to build like a startup or you're building your own app or something like that. But basically I just found this research paper particularly interesting because it got me thinking a lot more critically about how I use AI in my day-to-day -day basis of coding. So after reading this paper, I decided to change my approach to AI coding. Don't get me wrong, I'm still very bullish on it. I still use it on a daily basis, but my strategy has shifted a lot. There are essentially two major workflow changes that I made with AI coding is number one, sometimes if it's like a bigger, more ambiguous feature, I'll make the AI coding agent make the big changes just to give me an initial starting point. But then that last 20%, I go in and manually make those changes myself because oftentimes I find myself in the situation where I know what I want in my head, but I have a hard time articulating it out into words. And then when I try to make an AI coding agent make those changes for me, because I have a hard time explaining the changes I want in like plain English, the coding agent has a difficult time understanding and trying to actually execute those changes that I want in a particular style that I want. So it's much faster for me to just make those changes manually myself to finish off that last 20%. Now, on the other hand, if it is a big change that I know exactly step by step stylistically how I want everything to be built, rather than letting AI go off and make huge changes all at once, I actually forcibly restrict it saying, hey, this is the gigantic feature that I want to build, but we're only going to focus on this initial step. Don't make any other changes outside of this. So in that scenario, I really restrict AI coding agent to make very, very small, very controlled changes that are very specific with like really, really specific instructions, talking about the code syntax, how I want to format it, the exact stylings I want it applied to. So in that scenario, I'm still actually coding. It's just more so I'm coding using plain English and then the AI coding agent just translate my plain English into the actual syntax itself. So the whole point of this video is just to get you to think a little bit more about your day-to-day -day AI coding usage. Are you really being productive or were you more like me and you were making your AI coding agent do work for you just so you can kind of rot your brain more on social media? That's what I was doing. Maybe that's not the case with you, but the whole point of this video is just to make you think a little bit more critically about how you use AI on a day-to-day -day basis to write code and build apps in general. Let me know your thoughts on this paper. Let me know your thoughts on my coding workflow, your coding workflow. We'd love to know if you have any interesting revelations or thoughts about your relationship with using these AI coding agents on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for watching. That is all I have for today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.